All right, now to this story. NASA's solar-powered Mars rover named Opportunity just celebrated its 5,000th Martian day on the Red Planet. One Martian day is about 40 minutes longer than a day here on Earth. This is a huge milestone for the small robot. It was not meant to survive longer than 90 days. The rover is collecting data and photos, which are crucial for exploring Mars. Colonizing the planet is just one of the topics in a new book called The Future of Humanity. Terraforming Mars, Interstellar Travel, Immortality, and Our Destiny Beyond Earth. The book's author is CBS News science and futurist contributor Michio Kaku. He is also a phys physics professor at the City University of New York. Welcome. Glad to be on. You say exploration is a possibility and a necessity. We'll get to the possibility part in a moment, but why is it a necessity? Well, you know, our life on the Earth is potentially endangered by asteroid collisions, supervolcano eruptions, not to mention self-inflicted problems like global warming and nuclear warfare. And we need an insurance policy, a backup plan. Now, remember, the dinosaurs did not have a space program. That's why they're not here today. We do have a space program. And that's why we need a backup plan. Now, no one's saying that we should leave the Earth and go to Mars, but a settlement. A settlement on Mars is a definite possibility, and NASA has teamed up with Silicon Valley billionaires to make this a reality. Very hard for the dinosaurs to do the circuitry with those talons. Um, the, mm -hmm. Tell me about the possibility you say that you say we're in a golden age now of, of space exploration. That's right. For 50 years, NASA was criticized as being the agency to nowhere. However, now there's a new energy, a new excitement. The president has said we're going to go back to the moon by next year and then on to Mars. And then just three weeks ago, millions of people tuned in to Elon Musk's launching of the Falcon Heavy rocket. Now, that was no ordinary rocket. That was a moon rocket, fully capable of, of putting astronauts around the moon, funded by private funds. Well, isn't that the interesting thing? Because during the Apollo age, the government was very much into it, but now it's very much more in the private sector that's behind this. That's right. Uh, Jeff Bezos, the richest man on Earth, uh, the man behind Amazon, has created his own private spaceport in Texas. He has his own fleet of rockets. Elon Musk wants to create a multi-planet species in case something happens to us on the planet Earth. And he has set his sights onto Mars. So we're talking about a new excitement a new energy that we didn't have for 50 years. Talk about what SpaceX is doing tomorrow, this demo that they are launching. Yeah, we're talking about the fact that the Falcon Heavy rocket is now and not any ordinary rocket. It, it has within it the Dragon capsule, which can seat many astronauts and go fully around the moon. Now, starting next year, we're going back to the moon on an unmanned mission with the NASA rocket. We have two moon rockets, by the way. NASA rocket, sponsored by taxpayers, and the Falcon Heavy, sponsored by Elon Musk, SpaceX. Starting next year, we're going to go back to the moon with an unmanned mission to surround the moon. Yeah, we can see your, we can always feel your passion and enthusiasm when you come. Somebody said about your books and about you, you always continue to astonish and alarm. And the alarming part must be on page three when you say one day the earth will end. It will be inhospitable to human life. Yeah, it's That's sad so uplifting, Michio. <laughs> it's sad to say, but 99.9% .9 of all life forms on the Earth eventually go extinct. Extinction is the norm mm -hmm. on the planet Earth, but we're different. We can reason, we can plan, we can plot ahead. We don't have to simply face our doom. And remember, and we can we're reproduce. That's right. And remember, we're talking about events that are so far in the future. No one is saying that global warming or nuclear warfare is going to end humanity anytime soon. But we need plan B. We need a backup plan just in case. And what do you think about contact with another alien civilization? Well, let me stick my neck out. I think that in this century, we will have an intercept of a conversation, eavesdropping on aliens in outer space communicating with each other. We have identified 4,000 planets orbiting other stars. We now believe that there could be over a billion Earth-like planets in our backyard, in, in the galaxy, and to assume that we're the only game in town, I think is a little bit presumptuous. Yeah. So I think it's inevitable that, yeah, we will make contact with these aliens. And then the question is, how come they don't land on the White House lawn and advertise their presence? Yeah. But so they're, when you... Because they'll be shot. Right. And what are those aliens like? Well, <laughs> if you go into the forest, do you talk to the squirrels and the deer? 
maybe for a while, but eventually you get bored because <laughs> they don't talk back to you. <laughs> Michio, when you're in the forest, are you talking to squirrels and deer? Initially, but after a while I get bored because they don't talk back to me. And if aliens are that advanced that they land on the Earth, we're like squirrels to them. We have nothing to offer them. So they'll leave us alone for the most part. Mm -hmm. So, Michio, is, is Mars the place we should be thinking about? I love that you write about uh, astronauts savoring some of the aesthetically pleasing rewards of the red planet. <laughs> uh, it sounds very inviting, like the Chamber of Commerce. But is it, is it Mars that we should be thinking about or those other Earth-like planets that might be discovered soon enough? Well, Mars is the closest game in town. Venus, of course, is spectacular, but it's super hot, 900 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface of Venus. Mars is cold, but it's, it's doable. And we have, as you know, probes already have looked at the surface of Mars, scoped out potential landing sites. And private entrepreneurs, uh, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, they have set their sights on Mars because they realize that it's Earth-like. And we can even begin the process of terraforming Mars. Now, we're terraforming the Earth right now. That's called global warming. We're changing the Earth. We can also change Mars, of course, over a period of many, many, many decades. But we can change Mars to become more Earth-like. Do you have a desire to go there? <laughs> I'm a coward when it comes to space yeah, travel. Me too. Yeah, I like guy. to have my two feet on the ground. Let yeah. someone else do the heroics. Yeah, right. But a new generation of young yeah. children, yeah. they're being energized because right. they say to themselves, I want to be that yeah, astronaut. I want to go to Mars. This is a new Sputnik moment for the next generation. Yep, and yes. I will cheer them on. Yeah. The squirrels are more verbose there. <laughs> yes, yes. The squirrels are very chatty. Thank you very much, Michio. The Future of Humanity is the name of its book. It's out today. Wherever you like to buy your books, you got lots of choices.